Midwest Diggers here. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, we wanted to do a little special video today to kind of help celebrate our 1,500 subscriber. We recently hit 1,500 subscribers, and uh, we want to say thank you for you guys watching our videos and liking and subbing uh, on what we do. Uh, we have a blast doing it, and we like uh, giving you guys a chance to see what we find. Uh, for hitting 1,500 subscribers, we're going to do a little giveaway, and Bruce the Digger is going to talk a little bit about what we're giving away here. Uh, and the rules uh, for the giveaway are going to be posted below, uh, so please check the, the contest rules, and uh, we'll go from there. Hey, thanks. Uh, for the first giveaway, uh, some of the stuff, or most of the stuff, is coming from White's. Uh, White's helps us out, and so we're going to help you out. Uh, a digging tool, a book for In Search of Treasure, uh, Garrett's chip clip, and also a little poncho, and then White's a uh, real nice case that will hold just about any detector really, a nice padded case. Uh, and then a little uh, trash and treasure apron, and a white hat. And a little uh, water bottle too. So anyway, it's just uh, our way of saying thanks for uh, being our viewers and uh, we really appreciate you guys watching us. Uh, we're also going to do a little Q&A session today. Uh, we got a lot of questions from folks, uh, uh, people asking a lot of questions on our videos and we wanted to just do a little Q&A over some of the most uh, frequently asked questions uh, that people ask us. We'll be doing that today as well. Uh, so uh, keep on watching and uh, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank so you. anyway, we're going to do a little bit of Q&A, uh, and uh, Bruce Adair is going to start off, and uh, we'll go from here. Hi, everybody. Uh, the first question uh, on our list is, is, what do you do with the coins that you find? Well, the main thing that I do is, is I save all my clad and, and uh, the, the coins that are probably in bad shape and all like the coins that are in bad shape and the clad. I save those and I take those to the bank, I cash them in, and then I take them to one of our local coin dealers and I trade the cash in for silver, either silver bullion or silver coins, old coins, etc. And to me, I like to do that because it's just another way to save them, save my money and invest my money in, in the uh, cloud, etc. that I buy. Yeah, and we get, I would say in a given year, you know, we turn in probably four to five hundred dollars just in clad. And clad, for those of you out there that don't know what that is, it's pretty much anything that's not silver, 1965 and newer. Uh, you know, we, we dig a lot of those up and, you know, it, it really makes it worthwhile. We can turn it in and invest a little bit and get some of that silver and gold bullion at the end of the year. Okay, the uh, second question is, is what about the coins that are not valuable like Lincoln pennies, new dimes, etc.? Well, it's kind of the same thing there, except when it comes to the newer coins, the zinc pennies, we don't even really bother picking them up anymore. We kind of used to, but it, there's so many of those zinc pennies that are damaged, uh, whether it's the fertilizer, ground conditions, whatever, that destroys the pennies. A lot of times the banks won't even take them, so we just leave them lay anymore. The bad thing about it is, is if there's a zinc detection that's three or four inches down, we usually dig those because those can be uh, Indian head pennies. So this is a big question we get a lot too. Um, how, how deep are the coins that you find in the ground and uh, how old? Uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things depending on the detector you have. Uh, you know, we, we feel that most detectors can probably go eight to ten inches deep. Uh, on a larger signal, and I'm talking coin size. Um, but you know, the majority of the, the things that we find, especially the older silver uh, and items like that, you know, you're probably talking seven, eight, maybe nine inches deep uh, if it's a quarter or a 50 cent piece or a silver dollar. Uh, you know, and you never know, too. You can find uh, in some of our videos, you know, we, we've, we found silver, you know, that's only half inch to inch deep. You just really never know. Uh, however, if you get into an area that's never been touched, and a coin was dropped 100 years ago, you can probably pretty much guess that that coin will probably be, you know, six, seven, eight, nine inches deep, uh, especially if it's in a heavily wooded area where you have a lot of foliage dropping every year. 
Uh, you know, so we see a lot of that. You know, I've heard I've heard that you can go every 10 years that a coin can drop an inch. Uh, you know, that seems to be the case in certain conditions, but uh, in other times, you know, you find them real shallow. So uh, that's something as well. So we had some questions. We we purchased a Nell coil, a big 17-inch coil that we used in a couple of our videos. And uh, some folks want to know if we found anything with that. And, uh, you know, it turns out that it's a great coil. Um, however, you want to be in, a, in an area that, that has, doesn't have a whole lot of trash uh, in a larger area, maybe like a big field uh, or something like that. So a lot of the hunting we do is in uh, more areas that have a little trash and then areas that also um, have had a lot of uh, folks, you know, uh, throughout the, the area. So it makes it hard to use a big coil like that. But we do have plans this year, this fall, to use that coil and get it on video for you guys so you can see, see how it works. It's a good coil, uh, and it does cover a large area, and it does go fairly deep. We, we're going to do some tests on it and, and show you guys in a video as well. Uh, we get a lot of questions about geocaching. Uh, you know, we don't geocache, and a lot of folks don't know what it is, but a lot of the times we, we're out detecting and we will find a geocache hidden uh, in a location, and that's kind of fun. You know, we, we see... And we'll open them up and see what's in them. We never take anything out of them. And sometimes we'll, you know, put a few coins in there or something. But, uh, you know, geocache is just a game that, uh, you know, you put coordinates on, uh, longitude and latitude coordinates. And you go on these hunts trying to find the item. And you'll either put something in there and take something out. Uh, but it's a fun game, it looks like. But uh, we do find those just uh, when we're out detecting out in the woods and a lot. So that's kind of fun. Yeah, some of them have been pretty comical. Uh, how do you get your research for your 1800s places? Uh, one of the persons at Saskatchewan lives in Jacksonville, Florida, and they said that they can't find maps older than 1920s, and then thanks for your answer in advance. Well, the best place to start is your, like your state historical society. A lot of the smaller towns like here uh, where we live in Nebraska, even the small towns have small museums, and a lot of times those museums are not manned seven days a week, or even five days a week as far as that goes. They might just be open on certain days or holidays. But it's really a good place to start because the people that are in those museums are usually older people that have grown up in the areas and can give you a real, or give you a whole lot of good real information. Um, a lot of times it just helps to knock on doors and ask people, uh, ask people about the history of wherever it is that you're at. Uh, one of the places that we recently have done, uh, it's just kind of a snowball effect. Uh, when, when you get permission to do a good, a good spot and then somebody might know somebody else and you can ask them questions about what used to be there what was close by, et cetera. It's just, it's just good to be out, you know, outgoing and, and try to get as much information as you can and as much uh, permission as you can. All right, what's the next question we got? All right. Uh, it says the state historical buildings where you can research the states going way back and also obtain copies of old maps to help identify areas. Typically, each state in the U.S. has a place like this, and they do. A lot of times, though, those places are, are gone, and they're, they're gone through either the modern changes, things that have advanced, uh, and they're covered up. So that's why it's just really, in my opinion, it's just best to, to really talk to people and, and, and talk to the older people around your, your local towns and uh, try to find out those places where they grew up and what they did and, and to see if they're if they're available a lot of times uh, the places uh, one place that we have in particular that we go to there's no remnants of anything and it used to be a booming metropolis and we have a, we have another place coming up that's just like that there's no remnants of, of what there used to be there either but the way we found out was just by talking with people. And that's just really the best thing to do. Uh, one of the next questions are is, is, why in the heck would you keep a four-land base that you found as a piece of junk? Well, I remember that day. 
first of all, we didn't know what it was in the beginning. Uh, through my experiences in, in uh, my past, from I used to be in, in two antiques pretty heavily. We finally figured out that it was an antique floor base, floor land base. We don't really keep everything that we find, but some of that stuff, once you get out there and you start looking, and it's just a, it's just a neat find, and it's just a neat collection to keep the things that you found and your relics. And, and it's, I think it's just because you found something that has a story behind it. Everybody thinks that you just want to uh, find the things that are valuable, and that's just a bonus for us. But finding the old relics, even though they're worthless, that's neat too. Yep. All right. Uh, so that, that's kind of the same question here. But um, so do you folks take the junk with you uh, so no one else finds it, you know, the same thing out detecting after we're through? And definitely, you know, we'll, we'll take all the trash. I mean, that's one of the mottos of a detectorist. You know, uh, take everything you dig, even if it's trash, uh, take it with you and then uh, either throw it in the garbage when you get home or uh, save the metals and turn them in as, uh, you know, a junk metal at your local salvage uh, yard. So there's multiple things you can do with uh, a lot of those metals and you know they can pay a few extra bucks and give you something to, to a few extra dollars in your pocket. So we get this a lot too. Uh, a lot of folks want to know what detectors and what pinpointers we use. Uh, Bruce the Digger, he's, he's a Whites guy and I'm, I'm the uh, Garrett guy. I run an AT Pro. I got three or four different coils for my detector. Uh, also running, uh, I run a White's pinpointer, uh, so you'll see that sometimes in the videos. Uh, I got the new TRX uh, uh, pinpointer that I use, and that thing really is real, real good. It's, it goes about three, four inches deep from the, the base of the point. Real sensitive, so it's a good little unit. But I love the AT Pro, waterproof, uh, pretty much good in all conditions. You know, you can get out there and it's raining on you, and you still can detect why most other folks uh, pack up and leave. Uh, and Bruce, you got, what are you running now? The MXT Pro. Uh, it's got a 10-inch coil on it. It's, but I use, I also use in a double Eclipse coil also. Um, well, you're running the All Pro, right? All Pro, yes. Yeah, All Pro. Yeah. And I use a TRX White's pinpointer. The TRX, if uh, anybody doesn't know this yet, when they first came out. Whites didn't know for sure if they were met or if they're uh, waterproof, but they are waterproof. So you can take that for what it's worth. Uh, we've never really used it in the water yet, but uh, it is very sensitive. And you and I've used all of them, and it seems to me to get the most depth. Yeah, it's a good unit. All right, it's another question we get a lot. Uh, we're just curious why you set your discriminations so high when you guys detect. Uh, you know, it's a, it's a great question. Um, you know, when we make these uh, videos, we want to give you guys something to, to watch and some fun stuff and dig in some, you know, good items. So a lot of the times we'll set our discrimination fairly high so we can kind of go after some of the good stuff, you know, some silver, uh, you know, coinage, you know, that kind of stuff. And, you know, if we're out detecting and we got time, uh, you know, and we're in an area that's low trash, we will turn down the discrimination and go for pretty much anything we can find. But a lot of it just depends on where we're at, you know, what we're looking for, and uh, what kind of conditions they are up during the day. And, you know, uh, if it's a day we feel like looking for silver and coins, we're going to set a high discrimination. If it's a day we're looking for jewelry or rings, maybe we'll, we'll turn down the discrimination and we'll, you know, we'll... Uh, try to shoot for some rings. So you just never know. It just kind of depends on the day that we're out. I might add to that, uh, I get a lot of calls for people who have lost their wedding rings, things of that nature. And when I go out and do those kind of calls and I know that they have just recently lost it, I turn my discrimination way down so that I can pick up everything. Because I know what I'm looking for is going to be close, or if not, right on the surface. And in that case, it really works well. All right, so uh, another question we get a lot is um, if we bottle hunt. Uh, we don't. Uh, you know, what's funny though is we do come across bottles, old bottles when we're out detecting, depending on where we're at. And I know some of the videos we got have us shown us finding bottles. Uh, one of the ones that we were found uh, was an old 1800s Coke bottle. 
and we've had a ton of questions on this on, on multiple videos. Want to know if the bottle is authentic? Uh, I still we still don't know to this day if it's authentic. We've had some feedback from people saying it is authentic, and some feedback from other people saying it's a rep you know a repro uh, bottle. Uh, we found it in a lake that was drained uh, that was uh, that had uh, was in a farmer's area, and so there's some old. Uh, trash pits around the lake that had receded in over the years and we think the bottle came from one of those trashy areas but we still don't know if it's authentic uh we don't have a whole lot of people around this part of the states that know a whole lot about bottle hunting just because it's not real popular here so anyway uh you know one of these days we'll find out if it's authentic or not so Anyway, so that kind of concludes some of the Q&A that we want to go over with some of you folks out there. All right, folks, that concludes our Q&A for today, so thanks for uh, sticking with us. Uh, also, want to make a little announcement. Uh, we're going to do another little giveaway when we reach 5,000 subscribers. It's kind of our next uh, hurdle to get over. Uh, so we'll be doing something uh, real big and, and fun at that time, and we'll be making that announcement when the time comes. So anyway, you guys have a great day, and we'll be seeing everyone soon this fall. Thanks.